Okay, hey folks, picking up where we left off. Um, and I'm gonna talk about another um, example, another specific mechanism example. Um, so last time I went through that, um, uh, let's see, I went through the Lindenman Hinshelwood mechanism, which is a general mechanism, um, but I use that specifically to talk about the bromine reaction. So we can apply this Lindenman Hinshelwood mechanism um, to a lot of different types of reactions. So I want to apply that um, to this reaction with ozone now, okay? And so what I'm going to point out is this is actually um, an elementary reaction right here, this O triple P plus O2 plus M. So you can see more reactions involving third bodies. Um, however, it's been proposed that even this elementary reaction can be broken down into some um, elementary steps, okay? Um, so, but the first thing that I wanna talk about is this triplet P thing here, okay? So that's called a term symbol. Um, and as it turns out, O triplet P is a ground state oxygen atom. Um, we're going to talk about this in a lot more detail in Chem 362. Um, but this three right here, this is called a triplet state. Okay. So there's three main common occurring electron spin states that we um, encounter, the triplet, the doublet, and the singlet, okay? So a triplet state is actually two spin up electrons, okay? Because if we look at oxygen's electron configuration, so let me do that real quick, right? We've got the 2s level, which we know is spin up, spin down. Um, let me uh, erase that and start again. So then we know then we have um, the 2p level for oxygen, okay, 2p. And we know there's three vacancies. Oxygen has uh, four p electrons, right? If we look at our periodic table, uh, we can see oxygen, yep, four electrons in the p block. So that's one, two, three, four. Okay, so these two unpaired electrons right here, that makes up what we call the triplet state. Okay, um, so that's the triplet. And so a triplet state, the reason why those two unpaired electrons are a triplet state is because there's three possibilities. There's both being spin up, there's both being spin down, and then in quantum mechanics, whenever we have an uncertainty of something, we apply what's called the superposition. We'll learn about that a lot more in 362. The superposition is this state that says, well, we don't know if it's up, we don't know if it's down, so it can be some you know, combination, like we don't know which electron is which, so we can't ascribe with certainty which is which. So that becomes three possibilities. Okay. Um, as it turns out, when you have a paired up system like this, okay, two electron pairs, we call that a singlet state. And so oxygen singlet D, we'll talk about um, what the D's and the P's mean when we get into 362, okay? So an oxygen singlet D is actually an excited state of oxygen. Oops, so that's the 2s level. So the 2s looks the same, spin up, spin down, okay? But now uh, to create this system, we go one, 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 and then actually what ends up happening is this makes an excited state with both of them getting paired up. And we call that a singlet state because that's how it exists. It can only exist one single way. Okay, so what this means is oxygen is a di radical. Okay, so why is that important and why am I getting into all of this stuff? Okay, well, when we look at this reaction of an oxygen atom with an O2 to form an O3, 
it seems like that should be a slam dunk in the chemistry, right? A singly unpaired oxygen atom is very unstable. It wants to bond with something. So it seems reasonable that this should not be a complicated mechanism. Um, but as it turns out, it is, okay? So an oxygen triplet P, as we discussed, is a ground state oxygen atom, and it's a di-radical, right? It's got two unpaired electrons, okay? As it turns out, and we'll see also examples of this um, when we get into 362, the O2 uh, molecule itself is also a di-radical. That's why it's uh, paramagnetic, okay? So when these two things combine, an oxygen atom and an O2, they combine via this fish hook mechanism, right? By this radical mechanism, okay? And that forms an unstable O3 star. That's what that star means, okay? And it looks something like this, all right? We've got our lone pairs um, all around, okay? So, and then now we've got this elongated bond here with this other oxygen. All right. Okay, something like that. So this is really unstable. So this is our O3 star, okay? With that extra elongated bond. Um, right, the molecule hasn't quite formed yet. So as it turns out, if we think about this via conservation of momentum, which we rarely think about in chemistry, but we should, um, if one oxygen, and so if the O triple P and the O2 come at each other straight ahead like this, right? And they collide perfectly, we have to conserve their momentum. Well, as it turns out in this scenario, where they collide with each other head on, and they just are kind of coexisting close to each other, which is what this picture is showing, they have zero momentum, right? If they're both approaching from the opposite approach. So that would say that this unstable intermediate is stationary. It's not moving, which at first you would say, well, shouldn't that mean it have zero kinetic energy? Um, and you might think so because it's not moving, but it can't have zero kinetic energy because presumably this molecule is at like, you know, room temperature or something like that. So all of that kinetic energy gets pumped into its vibrations, all right? And it's just as likely to kick right back out and reform that O triplet P and O2. So as it turns out, now this third body, so this is almost like the opposite. Well, it is the opposite of what happens in the, in the Br2. Now this third body right here collides with this unstable molecule and takes away some of its excess kinetic energy and allows the molecule to stabilize. And that excess kinetic energy is now given to the third body. So now the third body is in some kind of elevated excited state, um, which then it can quickly uh, react and decay back to its normal state. So this mechanism, all of this just ends up looking like O triplet P plus O2 plus M goes to O3 plus M, right? And technically even it looks like the M um, just cancels even, all right? Um, so, but what we could think of at first, we could put this together as DO3 DT equals K, and I'm going to use slightly different nomenclature. I'm going to say K Rom Rom bleh, Roman numeral 3, which I'll put up there, right? And so that Roman numeral three represents our third order rate constant. So K3 times O times O2 times M. So I'm going to drop writing O triplet P um, because as it turns out, if this was an O singlet D, if it was an excited state oxygen, even a third collisional body can't do it. 
So an O singlet D is just too reactive. And furthermore, if we think about this electron pushing, O singlet D doesn't have those available electrons that want to pair up, okay? So this gets really interesting. So this is why we use term symbols, so we can see the available electron chemistry, all right? So now what we're going to do, a similar thing as to what we did with bromine, we're going to analyze these mechanisms using the steady uh, state approximation, and we're going to see how it all shakes out, all right?